Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video we're going to be looking at buttons. Specifically soft buttons as opposed to hardware buttons which we'll cover in a later tutorial. So um, I'm on the uh, wiki API page as usual and I'm going to just uh, uh, just talk very uh, quickly about these uh, functions that relate to button. You can see uh, there's only really uh, the three lines here in the table here, but um, we've already covered the um, the node related uh, uh, function, so we're not going to talk about that again today. Um, but just to say that um, you can apply the move visible opacity and viewport rect functions to a button. Um, and then essentially the button command itself, which is this button had add statement here, which we're going to talk about in a little bit more uh, in the code window, and an optional um, method for set, um, setting some um, a mouse setting related to a button, which we'll get into again in a moment. So let's have a quick look at the button add uh, statement. You can see it's quite a long statement. Uh, here, uh, quite a few arguments in there, but uh, fairly straightforward, most of them. Um, it starts off um, with a couple of uh, images, so you can you set up the first image there where it says uh, it's using the uh, description image normal. That would be the uh, the name of the image, how you want to appear just normally uh, before you've done anything with the button. It says in terms of you haven't uh, pushed it or uh, done anything to it so that's the default image if you like and then another image which uh, depicts the button in its uh, pressed state so that tends to be in a lot of cases a button that's maybe shifted uh, just a few pixels uh, either you know uh, one way or the other or up or down or maybe it's got, uh, had, a sh had a shadow added uh, on the outside just to give us a, a sense of movement of the button when you when the uh, code flicks between the uh, normal state and the pressed state you'll see that in operation in a moment then um, the the normal parameters that you would expect uh, for an image which obviously these images are associated with the uh, with the button um, and all of these parameters apply to both of the images so all uh, both of them are aligned at the same X and Y uh, positions and with the same width and height and then the last two arguments um, are a couple of callbacks um, the first one is the press callback you have to ha include this in the um, in the command and this is the name of the callback that you want to call when the button is pressed uh, and then optionally, uh, you can see it says optional here, um, you can add a released callback. So you don't have to add this, but we're going to add it um, for the demonstration today just so that you can see uh, um, how the press and the release uh, callback work. But you can uh, omit the release callback if you're not using it. So let's delve straight into the um, code editor. So I've set up just a, a very, very simple uh, demonstration here. Um, we've got the uh, mouse setting um, statement just commented out for the moment. So we, I'll show you that in just a second. But we're going to start by looking at the uh, at the button ad. So we've created an ID for this uh, button ad. We don't actually need the ID in this uh, code that we've got here, but we'll be, ne we'll be needing it in a minute. You can see I reference it here when we're onto the mouse setting and any, even if we wasn't using it here it's always a good idea that when you um, do these ads for whether it be button or or other some of the other functions uh, it's always useful to get in the habit of adding these IDs because uh, many times as your in instrument develops you need to refer back to these uh, buttons and the way we refer back to them is using their ID so it's, it's good to get in the, in the habit of putting the ID in and creating the ID when you do the ad um, so here's the statement then the name of my first image is is button.png so that's my default image and then my pushed image is I've called it buttonpress.png so let's just have a quick look at them um, so when we're on our um, instrument here um, you click on folder and you go into the resources area and this is the area where you where you store your um, your images and you can see here I've got my button image this one here. I've got my button press image. This is this one here. Um, 
I've still got the switch image that we use for some of the other tutorials. We're not using that in this particular code, but it doesn't hurt for it to still sit in the resources folder. And we've got another one here that I'm using later on for the cursor uh, demonstration for the mouse setting um, called cursor. I'll explain what that's for in just a moment, but just so you know where those, those uh, things, and it's worthwhile calling these images something meaningful so you you uh, you can uh, sort of find them later on when you've got uh, an instrument that's maybe it's got more than just the two or three images like I had in the resources folder there. So they're the images. There's my X and my Y, so 50 pixels in from the left and 50 pixels down from the top, and then an image of 100 pixels by 100 pixels, and then my press callback that's the name of my function uh, when I press the button that gets called there it is press callback at the top here and then optionally another callback called release which we've included in this particular statement release callback so when the button gets pushed um, it flicks between the default um, image and shows the button press image and it will call the pressed callback which in this particular case just prints the statement to the console here the word pressed but obviously you could action a command within the sim or you could uh, show another graphic uh, visible when the button is pushed whatever you want to do this uh, you, you, you can uh, you could call another function from within this function if you've got a bigger function doing a lots of other stuff somewhere else then every time you press that button there's no reason why this one this one couldn't then simply call another function which is doing something else so it's really up to you how you want to structure your code but um, for the purposes of this demonstration um, we're just going to use a print statement so you can just see how the callbacks uh, flick back and, and um, present their information back into those functions so let's go ahead and uh, run this uh, button so there we go, there's our button, a um, little bit blurry around the outside, you can see it, it, it scaled up to 100 by 100, it's actually a much uh, uh, smaller button there. And there's my button.png image. Now when I click the uh, button.png image, uh, button image, you can see it changes ever so slightly, um, because the button press.png image is now being displayed and that's subtly different. So just gives an idea I'll press that a few times there you can just see sort of a shadow around the outside there just gives us a sense of uh, um, the the button actually physically moving uh, but what's actually happening is uh, we're just toggling between two different images there it just gives a sense of uh, movement okay so you probably saw a few things coming up in the console here let me explain um, just show you that very quickly again so these are our pressed and our released statements as you probably saw when I was clicking the button away then so when I press uh, the button I'm pressing and I'm holding it now um, you can see it's just come up pressed it hasn't obviously come up released yet because I haven't let go of the button now I let go of the button you can see it's come up released so every time I press release press release press release press release there we go and you can just click it multiple times and you get lots and lots of them um, so you can see essentially how those callbacks get called every time that button is pressed or released. Really simple and straightforward. So that's the button. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, the, one of the other um, let's just go back to the uh, main API page. So one of the other functions that you can apply to button is this mouse setting. So mouse setting um, is um, has three arguments in the uh, command. Um, the node ID, which is obviously that button ID that we created um, beforehand, a property and a value. So the property is apply uh, applies to a, a, some, several one of these. This mouse setting can be used with a few of the different functions. Uh, the one we're going to look at today only applies to uh, uh, sorry applies to button. You can see there isn't another one for button. So the only one of, of a mouse setting that you can apply to button is this cursor property. So in our case, this property will be cursor. But you can see there's some other um, mouse properties that you can apply to some of the other things like dial, switch, uh, scroll wheel, etc. We'll talk about those a little bit more when we talk about the individual uh, functions of switch, dial and scroll wheel uh, in later tutorials. So you can see here this cursor property 
um, enables you to um, set a different image um, for the cursor so when you hover over the uh, button getting ready to click it normally you get that default uh, little hand come up you can change that to be whatever you want it to be uh, but it's important to note it says here this image must be 32 by 32 pixels so uh, it can't be uh, bigger or smaller than that um, I have tried <laughs> and uh, it, it doesn't work so it, it absolutely must be 32 by 32 for it to work so if it's not working it's probably because your image isn't 32 by 32 so let's go back to the code window and just show you that in operation um, so I've uncommented the uh, mouse setting uh, now and you can see we've got mouse setting button ID which is the button ID we've got there cursor um, is the pr property that we want to um, apply and the image we want to use which is 32 by 32 is this cursor.png which was that black hand that I showed you earlier in the resources folder um, so let's run the instrument again now you can see no change to the the basic thing but now as I as I move my mouse and go to hover over the instrument now my, the default uh, image of the uh, of the white hand has changed to be my new image uh, now and that is displayed so you can see um, that um, you can create your own uh, little um, cursor image if you want to um, for hovering over your um, your different uh, instruments or your different buttons should I say so there you have it that is the um, that is the button uh, function and the appropriate mouse setting to go with that button very very straightforward um, have a play around with it and uh, you'll you'll see um, you know it's fairly straightforward to use so that concludes uh, this video um, thank you for joining me um, tune in again and I'll see you again soon thanks very much bye bye